morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to Credit Law Center's uh, Three Things You Can Do in 24 Hours to Impact a Credit Score. Uh, really excited about today's webinar. We're going to be able to give you some tools and tips uh, that you can use today to have a positive impact on your credit score in the next 24 hours. So uh, what we will do is jump right in and get started. So these three things in the next 24 hours, I'm going to give you all three of them right here at the very beginning, uh, and then we'll go through each one of these tips and tactics one by one uh, in detail so you can apply that to your own credit report or to clients' credit reports or just give as good, friendly advice. Uh, also, there's a, there's a chat box uh, that you can ask questions in. We will answer all those questions and can reply uh, via email. If you want a recording of today's webinar, just email us. We'll give you some info here at the end on where to go to, to get that information. Uh, so a little bit of house cleaning there. I'll get done right here at the beginning, so apologize. But uh, we'll back to it. Jump in with the three things in the next 24 hours. First is actually one of the most simple things uh, to do uh, is add a new account. And again, we'll talk more about that. Also, too, another obvious one is pay down credit cards. Uh, or balance out credit reports to lower the utilization ratio. We'll go in detail on that as well. Uh, and pay for deletion, which is my favorite, which is something that we do each and every day here. Uh, these first two tactics are the two that you can do that actually don't cost any money. So you can add a new account without costing any money. You can balance out a credit report and lower utilization ratios, which is the ratio of your available credit compared to your current available balance on your revolving accounts. So you can impact that part of the score without spending any money. Won't cost you any money to do those first two. Uh, now the third there, the pay for deletion, uh, would impact uh, your credit score, or excuse me, would impact your wallet because you're gonna have to pay some items in order to get them deleted. Uh, but these first two are the two that are won't cost you any money to get started. So let's jump in and talk about why these tactics will work um, and dig into the details of them. You've got, uh, first, your credit score has no memory. And, and this is alarming to a lot of people when they first think about it or realize it uh, for the very first time. Most people think, well, your, your credit score is based on your history, so it's gonna remember everything that's there. And, and in fact, your, your credit score has no memory. So as that report changes, it doesn't remember the, the past information. It only knows what information it has right then and there. And scores, your credit score or scores are only calculated when a credit report's ordered. A lot of times people don't realize that either. They think that your credit score kind of goes up and down based on the information as it comes and goes. Uh, and in fact, your credit score is only calculated when a report is ordered or really when a credit score is ordered. Uh, and it's based on the information that's in file at the time that it's ordered. So if you can uh, change that information or update that information each time that, that score is going to change. So if you've got information on there on a Monday and you get it deleted, uh, or updated, you pull that report on Tuesday, it has an immediate impact. So if you change those balances or the accounts that are reporting, reorder the report, it's gonna have immediate impact, which is why these three tactics work and work immediately uh, and, and have a, a very fast um, reaction to that credit score. So um, when we talk about these credit scores, I wanna get some of the basics down here first uh, and go over those with you. And most people are, are, you know, shocked when you really dig into the details here too. And you look at right here, you know, your payment history. Most everybody thinks, you know, if I pay my bills on time, I'm going to have a really good score. Or I'm going to have good credit because I've never had a late payment. Um, or I've only had a few, so I'm going to have a decent credit score. And in fact, that's only 35% of the pie, right? So that's, all, that's, you know, the biggest piece of the puzzle, but the puzzle collectively put together outside of that piece is far bigger. Uh, so only 35% is based on how you pay your bills. The other 65% of your score is based on 30% of the amount owed, 
10% of the new credit, 15% of your length of credit history, and then 10% for the types of credit used. So 65% of your score is what we're talking about today, not just about late payments or derogatories, the other 65 that can have immediate impact. When you've got late payments, it takes a while to recover from those. So, uh, you know, there's things that you can do to, to improve it above and beyond that. But today we're talking about that other 65% of the score that can be impacted immediately and giving you these tips and tools that you can use to impact a credit score in 24 hours. So understand these basics of the FICO. And don't worry, I'm going to show you this graph again a couple couple more different times in the presentation to keep it fresh on your mind to help these tactics make more sense. And, and so you'll have a really good solid understanding of how to use these tips and tools to impact the credit score. So first we'll jump in here, uh, add a new account. Well, you know, not to be silly or simple, but that's one of the things to do sometimes with credit cards is keep it that simple. So just add a new account if needed, uh, but understand, um, if it's needed, you know, I'm not saying that just going out and opening up a new account or opening up a new credit card is going to have a, a positive impact on your credit score. Uh, very rarely will it have a big impact negatively uh, and can sometimes have a big impact positively. But understand if you need that score. So if you go back to that FICO pie chart and look at that 65%, if you don't have a mix, so if you don't have installment, you don't have revolving then hey, let's go look to get an installment or go look to get a revolving so you get that mix. Uh, the amount owed, if you know, you, there's two ratios when it comes to your utilization ratio at the bureau level. You have your individual and your collectively. So if you've got one credit card with a $1,000 limit and a $500 balance, you're gonna have a 50% utilization ratio. Uh, if you add another credit card, and that credit card has another or uh, an additional thousand dollar limit those two combine together and your balances combine together and your util ratio, utilization ratio is calculated again so you have an individual per account and then you have a collective uh, so just by adding this it can have an impact this is one of those things that doesn't doesn't uh always cost you money so a lot of times, you know, the best advice is, hey, pay down your credit cards to, to zero or pay your credit cards off. Well, if you don't have the cash to do that, increase the increase the amount of credit that you have and it can have the same impact on the credit score. So adding a new account can just do that. Uh, when looking at adding those, you know, one of the you know popular to topics is, is authorized user. Well, guess what? They work, they still work, they impact the credit score that 99% of lenders use uh, with the FICO version four, authorized users do impact the credit score. Now, now an authorized user, adding an authorized user account might not get you through underwriting because if you've got a thin credit file and the best account you've got that authorized user, your lenders can look at that differently. But in regards to the credit score, which is what your, your pricing is going to be based off of when getting a mortgage, Authorized users can and do impact the credit score. So look at adding those. And when you add those, it's just like any other account. The authorized user, you're going to get all of that account history. So your average age in file, the types of credit used, the amount owed, uh, and the new credit uh, is all impacted. 65% of what makes up your score can be impacted by adding that account or adding an authorized user. Uh, Another really common thing that a lot of times people just overlook is add to uh, add to existing cards uh, with the spouse. Uh, you know, in today's market, uh, a lot of people when they're when they're purchasing mortgages, they're married or they've got a co-borrower on there with them or applicant. Uh, look at balancing out these credit reports when people get married. Um, you know, merge these reports together. Look at uh, if the 65% that makes up that score and make sure you're putting the best foot forward, add yourself to a spouse's card if it's old and in-depth uh, and has a lot of revolving history and, and good pay history and, and a more available credit. Look at merging these together. You can be added to a spouse's card 
uh, or vice versa. Maybe one spouse uh, isn't a big credit user, doesn't have a long length, uh, lengthy history in the Bureau and the other uh, spouse does. Look at trying to marry those two together uh, to maximize that credit score. Uh, and this can, this can be done without spending any money. So, um, which is what I just kind of talked about, but the last on this one is, is balance out those credit reports with joint applicants. You can do that by just evaluating, looking at what this score is made up of, uh, the reasons it is or is not where you want or need it to be, and look at the other. You know, talk about taking one account and merging it with another account. When I say merge, I mean add one spouse to another spouse's account. So balance out those credit reports. You can do this without spending any money. Uh, so think about that information, look at that information, uh, and, and evaluate it to see that you're putting um, the best foot forward to score the best. So again, the FICO factors, by adding those accounts, 65% of that's impacted uh, just by adding, adding accounts sometimes. So. We'll jump in here. The second one is pay down a balance uh, on the credit card or balance out the reports. We're gonna really keep kind of hammering home on these on this particular tactic on the, these two. You know, you have a little bit of overlay of, of what to do and, and how they can be used. Um, but, I'll, but I'll talk about zero balances as well. You know, this is one of those common things uh, is, is as close to zero as possible. I hear a lot of bad advice given all the time, and I want to try to take the time to kind of correct that or, or so you guys have the best understanding and the best knowledge out there. I hear people say, oh, well, keep your credit cards below 50% uh, of the limit. And I always break it down this way. I, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, you know, kind of the, I always say the ABCs of credit cards. Uh, you know, if you remember back going to school and you get an A, B, C, or D, you know, it's how you're graded. Credit cards are really ranked the same way. And when you look at your balances, um, that's that's a good way to, to help explain it. Uh, if you would be considered an A rating on a credit card, that is between zero and 10%. Uh, so if you've got a 0% balance, you're an A plus. If you've got a 10% balance, you're an A minus. 10 to 30% would be that B student. Uh, so 11% is gonna be a B plus. 29% is going to be a B minus. 30 to 50%, which is where the average American's at, is that C students. Is 30 to 50% of the balance is used on their credit cards. And a lot of times people, you know, just don't realize that they're they're projecting themselves as a C student uh, just by carrying those balances. And and understand that. And and remember, your credit score is ascending, not descending. So as I use this as grading a paper, you know, you don't start out with an A and start to lose points because you, you do certain things. You actually start out at the very bottom. You start out at a 350 and start to gain points on your credit based on the types of accounts you have and how you use them. So you have to build it up. You don't start out perfect and, and, and go down from there. So keep credit cards as close to zero as possible. If zero is, if zero is the best, but uh, keep it as, get it as close to zero as you can. Another way, again, is the authorized users. Uh, adding an authorized user account, when it comes to your credit score, these can be really powerful tools uh, because the, the authorized users, those accounts do affect the utilization ratio. So adding these accounts can sometimes get you that quick fix or get you that boost uh, to get you up and going. And it's immediate because all of the history of that authorized user account is going to come on and impact your score. Uh, and again, I want to touch base on this. I am not saying, uh, I am not a proponent, I never will be, of, of buying trade lines. If, if you see or hear of that, literally run the other direction. It is illegal and it, and it is fraudulent and, and uh, it's a fraudulent practice. We do not promote that here. Uh, when I speak of authorized users, I am talking about a friend, a friend, a family member, somebody that you know that actually is going to give you access to that account in order to build that history. Uh, a lot of times, it's it's far better for somebody that you would, I would look at it this way, if, 
that's somebody you would ask to co-sign, then hey, that's looking at somebody to ask for an authorized user. You know, if I've got a parent uh, or a grandparent, uh, rather than hey, will you will you co-sign on a car loan for me? Would you co-sign for a 30-year mortgage? Or would you rather add me to one of your credit cards? Uh, use this as a tool to get that score where you need it to be. But the authorized users absolutely impact your utilization ratio. Uh, same thing again, adding with existing with with a spouse. Look and make sure that you've got the best accounts from this spouse reporting on the other spouse's report and vice versa. Adding uh, the existing cards and making sure you've got the right balance, you can impact 65% of what makes up that score just by merging these accounts together and, and making sure you've got the, the best of both worlds on, on both reports. So uh, again, balancing out those reports we just talked about, but what do you do if you don't have the cash to pay down? Uh, that's always one of my favorites, you know, the advice given like, well, pay down your credit card balances. Well, you know, you know what, if, uh, I had, if I had the money to pay it off, they already would be. So what do you do if you don't have that cash? If you don't have that money, look at it as, as, as a different way of understanding it and realize that your utilization ratio is impacted by two things, by paying down the balance or increasing the limit and they work exactly the same. That is a perfect two-way street. So increasing the balance is the same thing as lowering the balance. So look at doing these balance transfers. If you've got one spouse that is carrying the majority of the credit card debt and the other spouse is not, look at doing these balance transfers. Transfer the balance from one spouse to the other can maximize one spouse's score uh, contractually, they still owe the money. There, nothing's changing there. But if you can take a 680 and make them a 780 by transferring these balances, and they can qualify on their own, do that. You know, it's going to get them better terms. It's going to save them money. Uh, so, do balance transfers. Look at doing a balance transfer if you're wanting to try to get out of uh, a high interest. Talk to people that you'd look at the same people that you would talk to about co-signing or that authorized user relationship, talk about doing a 0% balance transfer to one of their cards uh, that pulls that off of your debt or off of your score. It has an immediate impact. Your score can go up. You can get yourself into a better place to uh, get better terms or more favorable terms on, on financing, but it absolutely can do that. So if you don't have the cash, look at doing balance transfers. Uh, another one is ask for that credit line increase on, on cards. Uh, one of a, a big retailer here locally for us uh, around our corporate office is Nebraska Furniture Mart. They've got their own uh, merchant, you know, or direct card. So it's a Nebraska Furniture Mart card. They're loaning out their own money to buy their own products. Uh, if you have good history with them and pick up the phone and call uh, on these department stores, a lot of times they will increase your limit uh, just because you're looking at purchasing uh, something in their store. So if you've got marginal credit and you don't feel like you can get uh, a credit line increase, look at the accounts you have, see if you've got any department store cards, pick up the phone and call and, and talk about some purchases you want to make and, and ask for a credit line increase. A lot of times they'll bump that without an inquiry uh, and can just increase that limit. They increase that limit, that's the same thing as paying down that balance. So a good tool to use if you don't have the cash, look at asking for a credit line increase. Uh, once again, the, another point here on the second term is balance out those credit reports with the joint applicants. Make sure you're maximizing the, the quality accounts that each spouse has. Uh, marry those two together uh, to balance out those reports. So. Uh, so the first two tips that we went over uh, can be done without spending any money uh, and impact 65% of the score. We, we knock out the payment history and the 65% we're talking about today is the types of credit used, the length of credit history, new credit, and the amount owed. So remember these facts. Uh, can absolutely impact that score immediately and can be done in the next 24 hours. Uh, the last here that we're going to talk about is the third pay for deletion, which is my favorite. 
and let's talk about some facts about paying for deletion and break down what I mean when I say pay for deletion. When I say I'm going to pay an account for deletion of that account, it's a negotiation with, with the creditor. If I pay you, I'm going to ask you to remove that from my credit report. Uh, once that's removed, again, your credit score has no memory. So let's jump in and talk about some facts about paying for deletion. First of all, collection companies do this every day. If you're on the phone with a collection company and they say, hey, we don't do it, don't believe that or they don't let them tell you that it's against the law either because it's not against the law. Collection companies do it every day. It's a big part of our business here at Credit Law Center is once a company crosses all their T's and is dotting all their I's, the only leverage we have left if they're complying with the law is that they want the money and we're not willing to pay them unless it's going to be deleted from the credit report, which is the only way you're going to have a positive impact. So we'll negotiate that. Um, again, it's not a violation of the law um, at all. Uh, nowhere in the FCRA does it say you cannot delete information. Um, you can get into an area to where the creditors, it can be uh, against their agreement with the bureaus that they're not going to just delete information. Uh, and in fact, one of the largest collection companies in the world actually has it on their website and spells out the terms of, of how to do that. Um, it, it's based on how old it is because it's not really even having an impact on the credit score anymore. But and you're willing to pay it, they're in full, they're willing to delete it. So uh, it isn't against the law, and collection companies do it every single day. When you do this, be careful. Make sure you get the offer in writing. Uh, you want it in writing because a lot of times these, these debt collectors will just tell you what you need to want to hear uh, in order to get paid. Uh, that's typically what they're after is, is trying to collect money, and sometimes they'll do whatever they need to do in order to collect that. But make sure you get it in writing. It's a negotiation, um, and, and you want to make sure that they're going to back it up. And if you have it in writing, then they're more likely to, to follow through with it. So um, also in this pay for deletion, and where I'm going to go into details is use their mistakes as leverage. Uh, when, you, when you're talking to a debt collector, first and foremost, try to find a mistake that they're making and use that as leverage. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's our secret sauce. You'll see on the web or talk to other companies that, that you know, they, hey, they've got this special tactic. It's secret. Uh, you don't know. I, I can't tell you what it is, but we, we have really good success. Well, at Credit Law Center, we're 100% transparent. And our secret sauce, anybody could do what we could do, uh, and I'll tell you how to do it. And I'm telling you how right now. And what it is is use their mistakes as leverage. What we do is we identify mistakes and we use those mistakes as leverage to negotiate a deletion. When that leverage doesn't work, it goes to one of our five attorneys. Um, so identify mistakes on the credit report, use that in the negotiation with the, with the collection company and negotiate a pay for deletion if, if they're willing to. So let's, let me jump in and show you how to find these, mis the most common mistakes and the mistakes that you can see to use those. So, um, and talk about the most common mistakes we see. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, did a report and showed that 79% of credit reports contain errors. Uh, and let's talk about the most common accounts on there are collections. Uh, over 31% of collection, or over 31 of all credit reports contain a collection. Over 67% of those collections result from unpaid bills rather than unpaid loans, and over half of those are medical. So the most common accounts that have mistakes and are derogatory are unpaid bills, not unpaid loans, meaning that this, these aren't a lot of debts that people are just deciding not to pay or they ran up a credit card or they stopped paying on a car loan. It's typically given from unpaid bills, and over half of those unpaid bills are medical collections. So it's not bad choices by these consumers. No one chooses to go to the emergency room and rack up thousands of dollars, and that's the most common that have the most common collection. Uh, the average of the av or median uh, non-medical collection is 366 bucks. Uh, the average medical is uh, just a little over 200. Uh, and the people that are reporting this information, of our 5% sample of the people in the report that they did, there were over 1,400 different collection agencies identified. Uh, so 
this is important because it, it speaks to how rampant the, the inaccuracies and, and the violations uh, that we find because it's really easy to become a debt collector. In most states, you're not even licensed. If you can open up an Excel spreadsheet, you can more than likely become a debt collector tomorrow in your state. Um, and because of that, the barrier of entry is so low, the noncompliance and the violations are huge. Uh, that 79% of credit reports that contain errors, you know, if you look at a, a mortgage lender, a, a real estate agent, if, if the average mortgage lender had 79% of their applications had mistakes or the realtor with 79% of their contracts had mistakes, they would not be employed. But in this industry, it's unfortunately tolerated based on how the system's built. Uh, and the amount of, of um, bad players out there is, is the reason. So out of this debt, uh, this is a separate study, but I brought this in because it shows by the Medical Billing Advocates of America that over 80% of medical bills contain errors. Uh, so a lot of these accounts already contain errors before they even make it to the credit report, uh, which is just a really alarming number. So let's look at mistakes on credit reports. I'm going to show you a few credit reports and show you some mistakes that are easily identifiable to know that, hey, I've got mistakes, so it's impacting the score in a way that it shouldn't, and I've got some leverage uh, to be able to do the paper deletion or get the correction uh, on these accounts. So first, we'll jump in here and look at Millennium Financial. Um, here in this first red circle, uh, they're coded themselves as a collection company. In between these two dots, you've got First Savings Credit Card. Um, so it originally is a credit card. First thing that jumps out at me is the data last activities blank. So incomplete information is inaccurate information. Uh, so you've got mistake there. You've got a mistake here coded as an installment loan. It's a collection, therefore it's not actually past due in the payment status. Another mistake. So four mistakes, one account. Another one uh, set up the exact same way. You've got primary financial collection services. The debt was originally from ADT. The date of last activity is blank. It's miscoded as an installment loan. It should be coded as a collection. Uh, shouldn't be reporting that past due balance. So common mistakes uh, that we see every day. Um, we'll go through one here too. What do we have? We have eight collections on this credit report. Um, seven out of the eight are misreported. Uh, this last one right here in the middle is green. Uh, that one actually is coded correctly. Every other collection on this report, if you look in this column here, all are coded I-9, 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 the installment loan. Here you've got one coded O-9, which is a collection. You'll notice that the past due has a zero balance. They do owe $124. The original debt was a medical collection. Uh, medical collection right above it, misreported. Uh, but seven out of eight of these are misreported. And I can tell you every single one of these accounts on here, I use this specific slide on purpose, is every one of these debt collectors will do a pay for deletion with our company uh, if, uh, if our client's willing to pay it, they're willing to delete it. So that can have an immediate impact on that credit score. Right now, today's Tuesday, um, if we do this today and we get the credit report updated, pull that report tomorrow, it's as if this information was never there. So it can have an immediate impact. But uh, this is the Kroll Factual Data Report. I'll show you other reports. They're all structured relatively the same, uh, but the mistakes are concurrent throughout all of them. You're, you're going to see these mistakes each and every day on most of these credit reports. So dig into the details. Look for the mistakes. Use those mistakes as leverage to gain deletions. This can have an immediate impact. Uh, you can impact credit scores by working on that 65% uh, right out of the gate. These things can be done in, in 24 hours uh, if you can get the credit reports updated. So you'll have an immediate impact. This It doesn't take months and years to improve, but use these tactics. Um, to impact these credit scores and your credit scores in, in a positive way uh, and get a good boost and make sure you're putting the best foot forward. These tips and tools we use each and every
and every day. We've been able to help over 30,000 satisfied clients uh, since 2011. Um, we're using the law to help people improve their credit reports in a quick and affordable way. That's my webinar for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or would like a recording of this webinar to share, I hope you found the information helpful. Uh, the info is here on the screen. Just email us at info at creditlawcenter.com and we can shoot you out this recording. Um, hope you have a great prosperous day and thanks for attending our webinar.